everybody. Uh, the concept of linear momentum is uh, really an important one and it has so many practical applications in combination with conservation of linear momentum and impulse. So we're going to look at a few problems and uh, try to work them out so you get uh, grounded in the concepts in this chapter. The first question talks about a baseball pitched at 39 meter per second and hit straight back at 52 meter per second. Now that is an important word there that it's hit straight back which means that the the velocity is in the opposite direction. The time of contact between the bat and ball is given and uh, we have to calculate the average force between the ball and the bat during contact. So impulse can be defined in two ways. One, it's the product of average force and the time of action. And the other is, it is the change in momentum. So that is where you have the change in momentum coming in because mass times velocity is momentum. So mass times final velocity, take away mass times initial velocity is the change in momentum. So now that is a representation of what really happened. Pitch that 39 meter per second hit straight back. Uh, therefore it's negative 52 meter per second. You see that there. And then when you substitute into the equation, uh, you have negative 52, negative 39. And then when you do the calculations, you get that as, of course now I have brought the time, which is on this side. I brought it down to the denominator. So finally you get the value of the average force as negative uh, 4,398 newtons. It is quite a large force and is to be expected because the bat hits the ball and sends it straight back at a velocity that is greater than the velocity at which it was thrown. So that's question one. And now question two. Here you have a 95 kilogram half back moving at 4.1 meter per second, trying to break away for a touchdown and it's being tackled from behind by an 85 kilogram cornerback who is running at 5.5 meter per second in the same direction. So what was their mutual speed immediately after the tackle? So when you see the word mutual speed, you understand that the cornerback held on uh, to the halfback and they are moving together. So after collision, they only have one velocity, which is the common velocity with which both move forward. Now this question has to be tackled using the principle of conservation of momentum because it is a collision. So you have two objects their masses are given and uh, the velocities of both are given, the initial velocities that is. So I call the objects A and B, those are the masses and the velocities and they're moving in the same direction. So that's why both are positive. This is the principle of conservation of momentum. And the reason why you have it on the right hand side such as this is because they have a common velocity and so it's just adding their masses and multiplying with that. When you do the math, you're going to get the common velocity with which they move.
and that turns out to be 4.76 meter per second which is acceptable because it has to be between the velocities of the two which was remember 4.1 and 5.5 uh, so that is an acceptable result which takes us to the third problem in this problem you have a 9300 kilogram box car traveling at 15 meter per second striking a second one which is at rest and then the two stick together and move off with a speed of 6 meter per second what is the mass of the second car this is exactly similar to the previous problem except that um, you have to find the mass of the second car once again in this question both of them stick together so these are the given quantities uh, this velocity is zero because the second box car was at rest once again they have the same final velocity and then when you substitute it into the equation and calculate uh, you're looking for the mass of the second box car so got to separate that and uh, you get the mass as 13 uh, 13,000 950 kilograms here is the fourth problem in this problem you have a 3800 kilogram open railroad car that is coasting along with a constant speed of 8.60 meter per second on a level track okay so that's an important word it is on a horizontal track and snow begins to fall vertically so that's again important because we know that vertical and a horizontal do not affect each other so the snow falling uh, into the railroad car does not actually constitute an external force it's just an internal force and so the snow begins to fill the car at a rate of 3.50 kilogram per minute and ignoring friction with the tracks what is the speed of the car after 90 minutes so basically after 90 minutes the mass of the uh, railroad car would have increased because it's going to get filled up with a lot of snow so we have to find the mass of the snow that's uh, filling the car after 90 minutes so we have the initial mass and the initial velocity and uh, the mass of snow filling is of course uh, 3.50 times 90 which gives us the mass that is to be added and that is 315 kilograms so the new mass of the railroad car is going to be 3800 plus 315 right, so that is 4115 kilogram which I call MB so according to the principle of conservation of momentum the momentum before should be equal to the momentum after so the original mass times the original velocity should be equal to the new mass times the new velocity from which we find that the the new velocity is 7.94 meter per second that is how that problem or any of this type would be done here is the fifth question a 23 gram bullet traveling at 230 meter per second penetrates a two kilogram block of wood and emerges cleanly at 170 meter per second and the block if the block is stationary on a frictionless surface when hit how fast does it move after the bullet emerges important here is it's a frictionless surface 
which means that there are no external forces acting because the conservation of momentum can be applied only when there are no external forces acting on the system. And so you have the system of the bullet, which is the first object, and the second object is the block of wood. And initially the block of wood is at rest, so its momentum is zero. And so this is a simple case of uh, just applying the formula. The grams have to be converted into kilograms. And the velocity of the bullet, which is object A, is 230. Mass of the block is 2 kilograms, and it's not moving. The final velocity of the bullet is 170 meter per second, and you have to find the final velocity of the block of wood. So apply the principle of conservation of momentum, and then uh, work it out as before. I'll speed that up, because it's simple substitution there. Just got to be careful about that. Rearrange and calculate. When you do that, you're going to get the final velocity of the block of wood as 0.69 meter per second. So I just cleaned that up. 0.69 meter per second is the final velocity. Here is the sixth question. Let's have some golf now. Golf ball, 0.045 kilogram in mass is hit off at a speed of 45 meter per second. And the club was in contact with the ball for 3.5 times 10 to the negative 3 seconds. That's a very small time. Find the impulse. And then also find the average force. What is the impulse? Impulse is given by two formulas, at least two. One is the product of average force and time. And second, it is the change in momentum. So we know that initially the golf ball was at rest, so it had no momentum. And so when you strike it, it has a momentum and that should be the change in momentum. So impulse, it's better to represent it as J impulse. J is F delta T or change in momentum. Now, in the first case, I've used change in momentum to find the impulse, and I got it, because you have the mass, you have the initial and final velocities, so that's the change in momentum, which is the impulse. Now, use the other form for impulse, which is, impulse is equal to the product of average force and time. So that is the impulse which we already got. Plug those numbers into the equation and get the force as 578.5 Newtons. So that is how we do that problem. Number seven, you have to design a new automobile and you know it has to go through a rigorous testing and one of the testings is how crash worthy it is so that the occupants are protected as much as possible you know that every car has safety ratings and this car uh, and these cars are actually tested by smashing them into fixed concrete barriers and here it says at uh, 50 kilometers per hour and a new model of this car has 1500 kilogram mass and takes 0.15 seconds from the time of contact until it's brought to rest. Calculate the average force on the car and calculate the average deceleration of the car. Pretty simple. Once again, we can use the formula for impulse. But here are the qualities given. 1500 kilogram is the mass of the car. Uh, we never use kilometers per hour, so you've got to change it to meter per second. And an easy way of doing it is by multiplying by 5, dividing by 18, which is a simplification of 1,000 by 3,600. Final velocity is zero because it's brought to rest. So 
and the time is given so calculate the force the two formulas for impulse are f delta t or change in momentum i've put both equal to each other rearrange this is actually forces mass times acceleration maybe you notice that so direct and uh, simple question again now to find the deceleration all we got to do is use the formula net force it's better to have it as net force is equal to mass times acceleration so you get it as 92.6 meter per second squared and I have put a negative there because it's an opposing force and technically you got to have the final velocity take away the initial which would have made it 0 minus 13.89 which would have then given you a negative there remember that the negative sign shows that it's an opposing force and that negative shows that it is a deceleration number eight two billiard balls of course having equal mass undergo a perfectly elastic head-on collision if one's initial speed is two meter per second and the other is three in the opposite direction what will be their speeds after the collision this is a perfectly elastic collision which means in addition to momentum kinetic energy is also conserved Okay, so both momentum and kinetic energy are conserved in a perfectly elastic collision. That helps us to uh, find out the answer quickly. Because now you see the two balls have the same mass and that's why I've put MA is equal to MB, that's M. And because it's a perfectly elastic collision, we can use this formula which is the difference in their initial velocities must be equal to the reverse difference of their final velocities. Why do I say reverse difference? Because if you watch, you see it's VA minus VB is VB prime minus VA prime. So that's an equation that can only be applied if you know for sure that it's a perfectly elastic collision. And that formula is derived uh, from conservation of momentum and conservation of kinetic energy. So just substituting those numbers there will give you this equation which I've called equation one. Once again, uh, since the second one is moving in the opposite direction, that's why it's a negative three. And a negative and a negative here makes it a positive. So you get that equation and then apply the conservation of momentum and uh, the masses cancel out and you get a second equation. Once you get these two equations, it's a matter of solving the equations uh, by doing whatever. And I think in this case, I've just added the two equations together. So the left-hand side, when you add, you get five minus one, which is four. And on the right-hand side, the VB primes will add up to give you two VB prime, while the negative VA prime will get canceled with the positive VA prime. I hope that makes sense. And then you get VB prime is two meter per second. Now take that and substitute into one of those equations and you get VA prime is negative three meter per second. So, Actually, their velocities have been interchanged if you look at it carefully. Those are the answers. Number nine, here you have two bumper cars in an amusement park, sorry. Again, colliding elastically as one approaches the other directly from the rear. Talks about a diagram, but I've not given a diagram here. So one is approaching the other from the rear. Um, and their masses are given. A car A is moving at uh, 4.50 meter per second and car B at 3.70. Both are moving in the same direction. Calculate their velocities after collision and the change in momentum of each. Again, 
Simple application of conservation of momentum. Here's the diagram. That's car A and car B. I'm trying to move fast. You can slow it down and pause it as necessary. Okay, so that's an elastic collision. So, so we can still use that formula. And remember, it can only be used if it's an elastic collision. So that sets up an equation which I call, that's equation one. And then, just like in the last problem, apply the conservation of momentum. So when you do that, now that is 450 times uh, 4.5, 550 times 3.70. You get a second equation, see, but what I've done is in the second equation, I have substituted for VB prime uh, from what I got from the first relation. So now you have an equation which only has VA prime. Solve that uh, to get VA prime. Once you get VA prime, substitute back into this relation uh, to get VB prime. So that's how that question is done. Brings us to number 10. Uh, this is a very important question because it has so many concepts coming in. And uh, before the computer era, this is how the, this is one of the methods of finding the velocity of a bullet as it comes out of a rifle or a gun. They would just shoot the bullet into a hard wood uh, pendulum, you know, so and see uh, that the bullet gets, uh, gets stuck in the pendulum and then the pendulum together with the bullet stuck in it would swing up. And uh, by measuring either the angle made with the vertical or the height by which it is displaced, you can calculate the velocity of the bullet. In this problem, you are asked to find the vertical and horizontal components of the pendulum's displacement. Given the mass of the bullet, given the speed of the bullet, the mass of the pendulum is given and the length of the string is given. Right, a diagram should make it clearer. So that's the pendulum. That's where it was before it was hit by the bullet and then after it uh, swings up and goes to this position. So that is the vertical displacement and this is the horizontal displacement. I call it X and Y. So the mass of the bullet in kilograms, its velocity, and the mass of the pendulum and initially it was at rest. And now finally, after the bullet gets stuck in it, both of them together begin to move up with a certain velocity. So their velocities are equal. Their final velocities with which the pendulum and the bullet together begin swinging up are equal. So that's why I said VA prime is equal to VB prime and then apply uh, the conservation of momentum and uh, the application of that will help us figure out that common velocity. Which in this case is 1.78 meter per second. So at that point, when they begin moving up at that velocity, both together have kinetic energy. But as it continues its journey and reaches its maximum height, all the kinetic energy changes into potential energy. So we can say that the kinetic energy at A 
is exactly equal to the potential energy at B. Now once we do that, we'll be able to figure out the vertical displacement Y or H as you may like to call it. The kinetic energy is one half times mass times velocity squared. Remember that this mass is the total mass of the pendulum and the bullet, which gives you the vertical displacement. Now once you have the vertical displacement, you look at this right angle triangle And uh, you can, because you know this, and you know that this whole length is 2.8 meters. Uh, this distance would be 2.8 minus 0.16. So you know this side, and you know this. So you apply the Pythagoras theorem, and uh, you calculate x so that's what this this side is 2.64 and so 2.64 squared plus x squared should give you 2.8 square when you do that you get x to be 0.87 when you take the square root and all that, you're going to get it as 0.87 meter. Okay. So that's how that problem is done. And that's important because there are many concepts that come in there in that question. And uh, this next one is even more important uh, because here we have a 920 kilogram sports car that uh, rams into the rear end of a 2300 kilogram SUV that is stopped at a red light. It says the bumpers locked, the brakes are locked, and the two cars skip forward 2.8 meters before stopping. The police officer knows that the coefficient of kinetic friction between the tires and the road is 0.80, and he calculates the speed of the sports car at impact. And what was that speed? So, first of all, there is collision here, and uh, using the conservation of momentum, we should be able to figure out the velocity with which both of them together begin moving. But let's try to do that and then you will see that there will be two unknowns there. These are the masses. The velocity of the sports car is unknown, so A is the sports car, B was at rest. And uh, the force that is responsible for stopping them afterwards is friction. And we know that friction is given by mu Fn, in fact, mu Kfn. And uh, Fn in this case is mg, because the normal reaction in this case is simply, uh, you know, so if you have that, because it's a surface, and if you have an object there, the weight acts vertically down and the normal reaction acts vertically up and they're both equal so weight should be equal to normal reaction so fn not n but fn okay so fn is equal to mg so that's why you see that instead of fn i have the total mass times g once you get friction you can actually calculate the acceleration. Remember, I've added a negative sign there because I know that a frictional force is an opposing force. So that's what I've done. I've added a negative. Now the acceleration is by Newton's second law, force, net force by mass. So divide that by the total mass because both of them are moving together you will get the acceleration to be negative, which shows that it's actually slowing down. Yes, both of them are slowing down. Now we can use kinematics to go backwards and say, if that was the deceleration, 
and uh, you know the tire marks are for a length of 2.8 meter the final velocity is zero uh, we can now figure out the initial velocity with which they started moving you know using kinematics using this equation and carefully substituting that and calculating we get the initial velocity with which both together started moving at 6.63 meter per second all right so now we can apply the conservation of momentum which is this and remember both of them are moving together so add their masses times velocity with which they begin moving which is 6.63 so if you plug that number in here knowing everything else we'll surely be able to calculate va which is the initial velocity of the sports car just before it collided with the suv it comes comes out to be 23.19 meter per second which brings us to the last problem in this section and this problem is slightly different because this is a collision in two dimensions because you have an eagle moving with a speed colliding with a second eagle which is uh, moving in a direction perpendicular to the first so one is moving along the x-axis the other is moving along the y-axis and after they collide, they hold on to one another. In what direction and what, what speed are they moving after the collision? So that is the diagram. So both moving perpendicular to each other, 7.8 and 10.2. Uh, Now, instead of drawing this vector here, uh, you could have as well drawn it here. And so you see that this is a vector which gives the direction of momentum of the first one. It's, this is the direction of momentum of the second eagle. And so this is the sum of the two vectors. Because by the principle of conservation of momentum, the total initial momentum should be equal to the total final momentum. So I've called them A and B, and so momentum of the first eagle is its mass times its velocity. Likewise, we find the momentum of the second eagle. Once you get those two vectors, we know that the final should final momentum should be the sum of the two. And definitely this one is just the square root of the sum of the squares. But uh, that final momentum must be the product of the total mass times the final velocity. Because momentum is mass times velocity. So when you do that, you get the final velocity, the magnitude as 6.7 meter per second. But then you got to find out the angle at which they go off after the collision. And to do that, you just take tan theta, because tan is opposite side by adjacent side. You can use that. which is PB by PA, <coughs> excuse me. And that gives you tan theta from which you can figure out theta. So those are the problems. Uh, it's a good start to understand how to work out problems in linear momentum. And thank you and look for a second part of this where I will be solving problems on center of mass. Thank you.